Hi, well, I asked for your questions and they came in in the hundreds, maybe even thousands. So we've got uh, we've got a lot of questions to get through. Thanks very much for getting involved. Um, I'm going to step up the recording uh, process a little bit uh, to, to get through them. If you've got any other questions, um, property related buy to let questions, um, you can now email that question to inspire at for the landlords com. I'll put that link into the description. It's a new email address just for questions to be answered on YouTube or other social media things. Not for business questions, please. I know that there's, there's a couple of people who got been in touch. Um, there was also one or two comments saying um, yeah, they, they weren't sure if it really was me at the other end. Unfortunately, yes, it is. There's, there's somebody else that's going through them as well, but generally speaking, it really is me. And that means that uh, you know, I'm looking at that email address once a week that's it so uh, nothing urgent in there please and even if I look at it once a week there's there's quite a few underneath there that I've, I've not had time to get through to but I will I'm gonna read them all so um, don't forget to subscribe too so you get access to all these videos the subscribe buttons down below I've had lots of questions and all of these were about um, pretty much about the same thing they were all couched in slightly different ways but um, it was exactly well, yeah, what to buy? What does a house? What does it look like? What to buy and what not to buy? What are the essential building box blocks of a buy-to-let property portfolio? Uh, that question was from Jay, Simal, Lucy, Taj, Sanjay, Darren, James, Lenka, and Pat, amongst others. There was about three or four you know, reams of, of going down of, of other people ask similar questions. Um, so I thought I'd uh, start off with seven properties or seven types of properties to avoid. Um, new build or recently renovated properties. Really simply, you can't add value. Uh, the vendor just took all of the profit out of them, so we don't buy those. Next, off-plan properties. Almost always they're sold en masse, uh, usually by a, quite a slick sales effort. Lots of I've been in these kind of places, I've actually been to places where they sell these things out and it, it's people, I wouldn't even say they have a handset to sort of gaffer tape, the, the, they've got headsets and they're just going through these things. Any discount, it's usually false because everyone's getting the same price, therefore that, that is the price. Um, added disadvantages, they're usually quite a large scheme, so when they're finished, they usually all come to the rental market at the same time and that can become problematic as well. You find that the rental values start to go down a little bit. The next one then is um, fractional ownership of either hotel rooms or student pods, those kind of things. That's become quite a, a thing recently. Um, guaranteed returns, they sound good, right? Unfortunately, the resale market is uh, very limited. Quite often you have to sell them back to the person you just bought them from. Capital growth is low or non-existent, probably because of that, largely because of the fact that the person you're going to be selling them back to uh, probably isn't going to recognise whether the value's going up or not. Also, some of these prefabricated units that uh, I see going up, I think they're of questionable build quality for sure. Next, properties to avoid, overseas properties. If you haven't got the expertise in the area, just don't do it. Um, too far, too too complicated to manage, certainly to manage well, uh, added to the fact that the exchange rate can be, it could become the major factor. You know, it, it can double your returns or wipe out your returns. It's basically reducing your property investment to a gamble. So we don't do that. Next, properties with sitting or regulated tenants. I've got no problem at all buying a property with a, a tenant on a regu on, a, on a, a normal AST, a short short hold tenancy. But when they're there sitting on a regulated old tenancy, it's sometimes you buy them cheaper, but you're not gonna be able to do anything until the person moves out, usually to a care home, that kind of thing. So it might be cheap, but it's gonna be a long time, potentially, uh, before you can real realize your gain. Even worse, isn't it indeterminate time? Any property investment has got to be taken over a period of time. Uh, that's how you work out your yield. It's not just the money you made, it's the money you made versus the time it took. If you've got an indeterminate time, you've got an indeterminate yield uh, in investment. So we don't touch those. Next, retirement properties. Obviously, it's a restricted market. Uh, reduced sales value usually uh, and a very high <laughs> service charge um, almost always. Finally, studio flats. Uh, we don't buy studio flats, very rarely. We, we bought one or two ever, and um, reason being, 
they're difficult to finance and with the advent of really nice houses and multiple occupation that co-living um, all-inclusive rent they're becoming a lot less popular with renters the main reason is you can't rent them out but the main reason is um, it, it, it's the reduced uh, availability of finances financing for them so what should you buy our golden rule is to always buy property that you can add value to so we're either buying it cheap or adding value usually both usually something a little bit run down uh, with some problems to fix when you fix the problems you make the property worth more you create equity you can go to a lender you can refinance you can release that equity to buy property number two and property number three property number four they are the building box blocks to build a buy to let empire from after the refinance you need to be able to make need to be able to afford the increased um, mortgage payments so you need to make sure that they are affordable even after the refinance so it's important that the rent or level versus what the property is worth it stays in the right ratio it's a yield that's what property investors will call a yield the property needs to make a healthy profit every month we like one uh, two and three bed um, fam family homes you know they rent quickly and the families stay for many years so two and three bed family homes terraces detached houses some maisonettes perhaps but family homes and the tenants will stay there for a long time if you avoid the seven properties uh, mistake properties and then resolve to always buy properties where you can add value and where you make a monthly profit you'll be ahead of most of the landlord pack already so if you want to know more i recorded a whole series on exactly how to build a buy to let property empire from scratch uh, and i've put the link into the description so go have a look there don't forget to subscribe <laughs> easy for me to say bye for now